Senator Bob Corker wants to unwind government-sponsored Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and replace them with a new federal mortgage insurance corporation. Senator Corker joins us now. He's a member of the Banking Committee and ranking member of the uh, Foreign Relations Committee. You, you first told us about this. It was a while ago, wasn't it, Senator? You're, you're still plugging away, huh? Been at it a long time, Joe. It's, uh, it's very difficult, as you know, in a body like ours to, to make big things happen. But uh, we're going to have a great vote today in our committee, very strong bipartisan vote. And I think we've uh, laid the groundwork, no doubt, for the future and how housing finance will work. Uh, today we have a system, as you know, with no competition and no capital. And uh, obviously this bill would move us to a situation with a lot of capital, a lot of competition and a lot of capital. So it, again, it's been a great uh, effort. We're going to have a successful markup today and I think we've laid the groundwork for the future. And you, you really think this something might actually happen? Because we, we weren't, we were yeah. running off the next two and a half years that nothing was ever going to happen ever again. Yeah, you know, this is a long game, Joe, and, and uh, I don't think there's any question but that uh, there's tremendous consensus about the fact that we need a lot more capital in the system and we don't want our, our system to be a duopoly where basically it's almost like a Russian uh, arrangement that we have today. So, uh, look, uh, whether we do something this year or not, uh, who knows? Uh, unfortunately, we have elections every two years around here, but it doesn't keep those of us who want our country to be strong uh, want our economic growth to, to be dynamic from plugging away. So look, uh, I'm very happy with where we're going to end up today uh, after the vote. I'm, I'm just surprised that, uh, that that it even has a chance because we're back thinking it's fine to make it money again. Uh, you know, it was a problem a couple of years ago, <laughs> yeah. but it, yeah. and people are so worried that, that if we don't subsidize, housing's already fragile and we're counting on housing yeah. for to have this 3% growth this year. Yeah. People, I'm surprised people aren't saying this isn't the time to mess around with, with subsidized <laughs> housing. Well, Joe, uh, you know, it's always not the time to do something that is difficult to do and makes sense and moves our nation ahead. I mean, you guys have been talking about territorial tax reform forever. We're the only nation uh, in the world that has this crazy taxation system why aren't where you we basically... Why, why don't you leave but, Fannie and Freddie alone and go to... That's what I was going to ask you. Why are you doing <laughs> this? Uh, th that seems a lot more important. Yeah. You know, uh, Joe, I, I think I've demonstrated the ability to walk and chew gum at the same time. I've I mean, never seen work, you do that. We can work on, we can work on a lot of things you at the same time. I've never seen that. Could you do that right now for us? I don't... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, maybe I, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of Michelle, but, but I might do it in front of you. Yeah, so. you, haven't, you, haven't, you haven't practiced maybe. lately. Senator right. Corker, sanctions against Russia. You've put up some bills, etc. but whenever we talk to anybody in Europe, they are dead set against it. Do you think anything's ever really going to come of, of efforts to do anything to Russia relative to, to Ukraine, or is Europe just too weak? Yeah, you know, I... I, I, I I could not be more disappointed in the way we've dealt with the Russian issue. Uh, you know, they're doing exactly what they wish to do in, in eastern Ukraine uh, day by day. Obviously, the big line in the sand, as you know better than anybody, Michelle, is this election on May 25. And if they're able to show that it's discredited or didn't really represent all the people of Ukraine in some way, um, obviously, it's a major victory for them. At the same time, we're really doing nothing to push back. Uh, I mean, the fact that uh, Putin still has the forces on the border, which are intimidating. I think everyone knows he's fomenting through black ops. Uh, lots of problems inside eastern Ukraine. Um, you, you know what, it's Senator? It's just disappointing. Just, the, just this morning, we had the foreign minister of Cyprus on. He's in Washington. And you know what he said? He's like, we were extremely worried that there might be level three sanctions against Russia. But pff, I am very relieved. Yeah. Between his meetings in Europe and between his meetings in Washington, he says, no, they're going to be surgical. They're not going to be that bad, etc." I mean, is that it? Is he right? Well, Michelle, here, here's, here's the problem. I mean, we have done nothing to really, if you look at since we announced the sanctions and implemented the sanctions, the, the Russian stock market is up. I mean, these were nothing but tweaks. And what we've been advocating is that we hit uh, some important companies in important sectors, not the whole sector. And by the way, these are what are called second party sanctions. What we did with Iran was third party sanctions, which basically said if any of you do business with Iran, you cannot do business with the U.S. That's not the kind of sanctions we've been talking about initially. It's been second party sanctions saying that we will not do business with them. That would send a really, really strong message mm -hmm. to their economy. It would affect them in a big way, but it wouldn't affect Europe. So again, I, I just don't get it why we're willing to 
continue moving the red line as we've done on so many other issues yeah. and to continue to signal permissiveness yeah, throughout Syria, the world. Syria, but anyway, Syria is yeah. back too, but let, 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 you know, okay. right. red, red lines are But if Carl Levin introduces something that, that, that just is palliative and just uh, addresses the symptoms, you know, where we're just going to say, no, you can't move, uh, like a protectionist thing for, for Pfizer, um, would that pass? Would that, would he be able to, would that pass the Republican House? Uh, I don't know exactly the details of what he might pass, but if you just have the concept that says no American company can move, I, I just can't imagine something like that passing. Uh, I will say this, Joe, you have to be careful around here. You have to pay attention because uh, sometimes emotional things can happen on the floor which make absolutely no sense for the long haul. So <laughs> that's why I appreciate you guys having this program. and having people be able to come on and talk about the uh, long-term effects of legislation and what it really means to our nation and the world, candidly, over the longer term. So I don't think something like that uh, would stand a chance of passing. I would hope not. Well, then it, it just means that we're not going to do anything and the people are going to keep leaving because we're not No, gonna... what it means is is that we ought to pass we, territorial we're not tax reform. We're not going uh, to, though. Yeah, right. I think we may do that. Really? I really do. I think I think there are enough people on the other side of the aisle that understand it's ridiculous for us to be the only nation in the world with the kind of tax system that we have. And I think Pfizer and other moves point to the tremendous problems that we have within our corporate tax system. I, that's one of those singular issues, Joe, that I think if Republicans were in the majority this next time, it's one of those singular issues that I think we might actually pass as a standalone because I think there are enough yeah, thoughtful you, Democrats that realize this is really problematic. The I rhetoric think you get, that I you, think it is a finger so The other side is going to give you the finger when you try to do yeah, it, probably. Yeah, Sen yeah. Senator, yeah. if you had to describe the timeline and the most likely outcome that we could get on getting the cash back into the U.S., what, what would that look like if you had to describe a scenario that you would like and that's possible? Yeah. Well, uh, of course, immediate. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I just see no reason that uh, we want to trap capital in other places. So, uh, I, you know, the problem is the cash builds up. People say two trillion. I don't know what the number is. And then politicians here want to use it as a, a way of funding their favorite things. And so we do a one-time effort, and then eight or ten years goes by, and we do something else. I just want us to fix it. Look, I, I truly believe that our corporate tax system is something that is an impediment. Um, to, yeah. to economic growth in our right. nation. And I want to make sure people invest here. I think there are enough people on both sides of the aisle that at least on that singular issue, we can come together and solve it. We're probably not going to do something between now and year end other than maybe some repatriation that maybe does something for infrastructure on a short-term basis. That but that's you. not the way you create a stable, long-term, secure, growing economy in America. And uh, hopefully we'll do something that's more permanent and gives people uh, you know, the knowledge that this is the way it's going to be into the future and we can invest and have corporate headquarters in America. We can operate all around the world and right. we're not going to be penalized. Neil, go ahead. Hey, Senator, this is Neil Hennessy. You know, the corporate tax reform, perception from the American people is, once again, Washington's trying to protect the big corporations and this and that. When you talk about tax overhaul, do you ever talk about the individuals and what their tax rates yeah. are? And you look sure. at the bottom line is poverty in this United States is about $11,000 is a cutoff. And nobody can live in America off $11,000. Have you looked right. at maybe raising that up and tax free from the federal government so that people can actually get more money? money to be able to keep more money and spend more money. Yeah, you know, I was the only senator who voted to at least debate uh, the minimum wage issue on my side of the aisle. Okay, I think the fundamental, you know, debating one of the fundamental issues in America of whether we're going to, of how you increase the standard of living of average Americans to me is a very, very important thing. And so, you know, some people have looked at the earned income tax credit and expanding that so that if you work, you pay no taxes. Other people have looked at the minimum wage. To me, that is a debate that the Senate should take up. And uh, it's very important. Look, I was the mayor of a city and the most important thing to the citizens I represented was heads of households having good paying jobs, being able to raise their families in an appropriate way. So it's a fundamental issue. 
And it's an issue that no doubt we as Americans need to debate, especially as the middle income citizens in our country mm -hmm. find it ever more difficult to, uh, to, to really well, raise their families in the way they see fit. I don't fit. understand how you can have that conversation in, in, and not be talking about the corporate issue because uh, yeah. you know, taking these, these crummy jobs we're creating right now and we're not creating yeah. them very quickly and adding $2 to the minimum wage on these crummy jobs, that's not gonna help anyone. The only yeah. thing that's gonna yeah. help people yeah. are, are vibrant, globally competitive corporations responding to increased demand and, and providing more jobs. So it's all about, yeah. we're back to corporate taxation again. You just what, can't, but, you can't put but, a patch on, you can't just legislate that we're gonna raise the standard of living for people without, uh, without the private sector accomplishing it. Well, I, well, I, I would agree 100%. And so to me, the very issue you're bringing up would be central to that discussion. But look at the pass-throughs as was brought up a minute ago. Actually, if you look at between the, the highest rate that people pay, 39%, you add the, the Medicare tax that was added on uh, with, with uh, you know, the, the new health care bill, you add to that state and local taxes, pass-through entities in many cases are paying 50% right. of their taxes away. So if you're going to reform the corporate side, you have to reform the pass-throughs, the individual tax rates, because both in America today drive the economy. So I couldn't agree more. And, right, so and you're, again, you're Joe, the, you're, you're saying that the companies that aren't incorporated that, that pay on uh, the pay individual rates that those won't. And a lot of small businesses are like that, too. But my we're, company was that way. Well, no know, doubt. Don't yeah. you remember in the argument when we were raising rates, uh, the Obama administration kept telling us that those small businesses only represent two percent of the. But what they didn't say was that they're the big ones. You know, That's over right. 50 employees actually did represent like 50% of the actual revenue for small business. It's, we, you know, everybody owns had, it. It's so frustrating. It is. It, it's very frustrating. And uh, again, the whole topic of economic growth, of upward mobility, that entire topic has not been debated in the United no, States. No, I know. Well, and, all, and all of these things, all of these things play into that. And it is, it just, it's, it's frustrating that... You know, the one thing that Americans care most about, we will not deal with yet. And again, hopefully, right. if we get in the majority, that will be one of the first agenda right. items we'll, well take Well, this is out. why the wedge issue of minimum wage is being put forth every, you know, every couple of days in front of, you know, nodding people uh, standing behind the president. It's for 2014 so that what you just said doesn't happen. It's just another wedge issue to try to swing the election that way. But in yep. every two years, then we got another one two years after that. Anyway, yeah. Senator, you got it. Uh, I don't know. It's a dirty business. I don't know why you chose it. Uh, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for. You're trying to do 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 good. Uh, I understand no. that, but uh, yeah. Uh, would so, you uh, question why it, anyone would go into that business? Yeah. Anyway. Well, look, I, I just am practicing, so someday maybe I'll ask to be a host of uh, you know squat box or something <laughs> like that. When so, you grow up. Thanks, that's right. All when right. I grow up, I want to be Joe. You know. So. Coming up, are you?